Afternoon, uh, welcome to Tier 3, welcome to my kitchen. Uh, we're going to talk about energy management today. Uh, I hope all goods recovered off the bank holiday weekend. Very, very windy. Um, very windy where I was. Um, anyway, hope we're all good. Yeah, we'll talk about energy management today. Um, but I've got a question, I've obviously got a question. Um, so, very good question today. Um, my question is about because uh, it was about energy. I thought, well, you know, what's what's going to take lots of energy? And so, um, a lot of people do a bit of running exercise, very good for energy management. But um, there's some races that are like 24 hour races, so just 24 hours, and you have to see how far you can travel in 24 hours. So, my question is, what is the world record in miles for the um? Longest distance travelled in a 24-hour race. So how many miles have been covered in 24 hours? World record in miles, I'm after. So uh, that's the question. Anybody want to have a guess? Um, how many miles are covered? So it's, um, as far as you can go in 24 hours. I've got to be honest, when I found the answer out, I was very horrified. So... Uh, 84. Um, I was actually going to say, what do you think it is? It's going to be more. But um, I've got this get Jaff cake, like a Jaff cake. So anybody else just joining? What's the world record for the amount of miles covered in a 24-hour race? Any terrain. 24 hours. How far in miles is the world record for the amount of distance covered? That's the question. So good energy management. Anyway. I'm going to talk a little bit about energy management and what we mean by energy management, etc. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about a, a post I wrote, which is actually on um, Hemis Fraser's LinkedIn webpage. You can check my webpage as well if you want to read the blog. Um, but it's quite a, a bit of an interesting topic, I think, because um, you know I've been in and around management of time and all that kind of stuff, and so time management is a real like pillar of success at work. But I think as we've moved on, it's it's a bit more now in and around how we manage our energy as well. So the way I've kind of likened this is is like a, a, a video character, a game, a, a character in a video game, where you have to do a task, but you've only got a certain amount of time to do it. Now, the thing is, if you go really fast at the start, um, then you kind of run out of energy and you don't complete the task. But if you try and conserve all your energy and do it slowly, 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 then you run out of time. So you've got to balance those things off. And the, the other thing that game affords in the way that life affords it is you, you have to recharge your energy through the day to get you to complete the task within the given amount of time. So in, in work and life, we're kind of running through this, this game whilst picking up energy bars to make sure we can carry on. Now, what time management used to do for us was it would collect everything that we had to do and put it in a nice order. Now, if you had 50 things to do, once you'd used your classic time management four box grid, you still have 50 things to do, but they're just all in an order. Well, energy, energy management, we kind of want to do better than that because we want to make sure we're doing things at the right time. Now, there's been loads of studies uh, around what, what, makes people work effectively and one group kind of studied people and they said that people who were constantly um, producing quality results uh, were people who actually worked for around 50 minutes and then took around a 15 minute break and when i say take a 15 minute break what i'm talking about is they're they're managing their energy and they're recharging in that 15 minutes so they're doing things that will help them then burst again for another 50 minutes so if we use personal energy management and time management together, we will become more effective. So anybody just joining, I'll kind of clear all winning, so I'll need another guess in. Um, what's the world record for the amount of distance covered in miles in a 24-hour race? So keep as far as you can go in 24 hours, what's the distance in miles? Um, anyway, how do we recharge? So type a number in, any number. So how do we recharge? Well, you can recharge in, in loads of different ways. Um, 
and and I'm sure many of us know about extroversion and introversion um, from things like Myers Briggs, and they'll recharge in different ways. And an extrovert being solar powered, so they take energy from outside, whereas an introvert will, will get energy from inside. I like sitting quieter and things like that. But they're both recharging techniques. So how can we do it? <laughs> That's all right. No worries, Kev. <laughs> so how can we recharge? Well, there's certain things that we can do. Some of these things we'll recognize that we do. Um, music is a good recharger. Um, some of us do that when we're driving, which bizarrely, you know, you kind of think, do I need that for energy? But it gives us maybe a bit of a concentration but listening to music can help us. Um, sleep is good. Um, now, you're going to hear loads of things about, oh, you've got to have seven, eight hours sleep a day. And, of course, that, that's the aim. But you can nap as well during the day. And things like those 10, 15-minute power naps, there's nothing wrong with those. Um, regular breathing, um, headspace. I've, I've mentioned this across the 60-plus the T's at threes that we've done. But that doesn't mean if those things don't work for you, that doesn't matter. Not everybody lo loves calm, headspace, and, and the myriad of other apps. Um, walking, so exercise, just get out, uh, reconnect with nature, um, do something, but get out, particularly at the moment. Uh, but I think we can carry that back on, even if we're back at work. And I know consciously I would go out to buy lunch if I was in the office rather than just get somebody else to pick it up for you, little things like that. Um, eat and drink, and then this is no um, this is no health podcast or anything like that. It's just be aware of what you're eating, and, and we're not like piling up coffee cups and God knows what. Um, other things that can help your energy, simple things like uh, be kind to people, um, do something different, um, anything along those lines. Um, re read, read different things, and make sure you've got time for fun. They're the kind of things that can recharge your energy. Now. What else can we do? Reduce some of our decision making where everything seems to be a decision. So reduce decision making by eliminating things, delegating things or automating things um, because decision making will suck your energy. So if you can just not do it, give it to someone else to do or let a machine do it, it's much better. It's much easier. It's much quicker. And it takes that pressure away. And that links to a guy that I've spoken to before called Rory Vaden. Who, who brings that into play with regard to energy management and time management. Something else is about trying monotask, not multitask. So group things together is what I mean. So try and do a series of things together at the same time. So whether that be do all your phone calls, do all your emails, something like that. But, but just focus on a type of task rather than just whizzing loads of things at once. Multitasking is an energy drainer. And... Um, a lot of people get uh, multitasking muddled up with just starting loads of stuff. Um, multitasking classically is doing more than thing, one thing at the same time, not just starting loads of things. Sometimes it gets uh, get muddled up. Now, something else I, I, I kind of read that I thought was really quite useful was because uh, as trainers, we like everything in a grid and we like it all in a box. But I saw this, uh, uh, this this, this four box grid for energy management. And it, it kind of talks about a mental um, kind of soothing or stimulating. There's something to calm you down or something to lift you up mentally. And then also something for the soul almost. So something to recover the soul or something to suck the soul. And of course, then you can just put that in those four box grids. So what you talk about is, is if you've got something that's mentally soothing yeah, and soul recharging, yeah, so, so it's nice and soothing, soul recharging. It might be like a hobby, uh, something you enjoy doing, yeah, but mentally soothing, soul recharging, a good book, something like that would drop into that quadrant. Then you did, now, those tasks will help you recover. So anything that's mentally soothing and soul recharging is a recovery. It's a good thing to recover with. If we look at something mentally stimulating and soul recharging, that's about creativity. That might be about learning. It might be something about a real passion that you have. Now, those are the things that we, we want to put our energy focus into. That's our energy focus. So those things that mentally stimulate that recharge our soul. Now, the next thing is that there's some mentally soothing things that soul suck. Now, we could use things like social media potentially here. Um, it could be uh, admin tasks, simple repetitive tasks, 
It could be tasks that we use to please others. Now, they're okay, but what we want to do is try and limit those tasks. So soul-sucking, but mentally soothing. And, of course, the last one is the mentally stimulating, that soul-suck. Now, they're potentially the things that, that are really busy, high intensity, that we loathe. And um, those are the tasks that we need to escape. Um, we need to get away from those tasks because they're the more damaging tasks for us. We probably all have to do some of them, but ideally we don't want to do them all. Um, so I, I just quite like, like the simplicity of an energy grid about mentally soothing or, me, or mentally um, stimulating and soul recharging and soul sucking. And so if you, if you kind of think about those tasks, then that we've got recovery tasks, we've got focus tasks, we've got tasks we need to limit, or we've got tasks that we need to escape from. So there's some little tips on, on energy management. But just remember to, uh, to don't, just don't, you know, a lot of people think, oh, just the more I go at it, the further I'm going to get. And we know that's not the case from any of those video games you play. You have to stop off and get the energy bar. You have to get the energy bar. And of course, there is that famous old trainer story about the two guys chopping trees down. And uh, one guy chops continuously all in the forest. And the other guy, you can't see him, but the, the other fella hears that it goes quiet. So it gets to the end of the tree copy, chopping competition. The guy who's not stopped chopping has chopped 28 trees down. And the guy over the other side, they say, oh, he's chopped 32 trees down. And the first person says, well, how can that be? He said, because I, I was chopping all of the time, and this guy kept stopping. And they said, oh, yeah, but every time I stopped, I sharpened my axe. And that's the kind of thing. It's about putting your energy into the right things to get the right results. Good. Now, how far did the person run? 24 hours. And you could Google this because this is absolutely incredible. The world record is 188 and a half miles, which by my rough maths means the guy is running three and a half hour marathons for 24 hours, um, which just right. And I don't know how they sleep or what, but 188 miles in 24 hours which is honestly you'll have to google it Clark. that that is the world record that is a guy i think i think the female world record is 168 miles which is like just i mean it's just ridiculous i don't think i could drive 188 miles in a day never mind run it and yeah 188 miles and um, googling yanis someone i can't remember his name anyway have a cracking afternoon. Sun, sun's still shining here. Um, I hope it is for you. Thanks for joining me, and uh, I'll see you next week.